first interview of the day. My buddy Tommy Avalone is here with his series that is currently playing on Peacock. It's a two-part docu-series called I Love You, You Hate Me. Welcome to the Film Threat Livecast, Tommy Avalone. Tommy, how's it going today, man? Hey, man, how are you? I'm doing great. Wait, what is in the background right now? So I'm in my basement, and this is my my <laughs> my movie store. So you have like here. This is more movies over here. Oh man, and there's that's great, awesome. There's great collections too. It's like I have like the Kevin Smith selection. I have the uh, Quentin Tarantino selection. I have the A24 films. So uh, I I have like a. Is a movies about robbing banks, the one day hangout movies. <laughs> so I try to try to make it like a video store. Well, uh, I got to say, uh, you've made some remarkable documentaries in the past. This is not like anything you've ever made. It's incredibly ambitious. We reviewed it earlier in the show. I think I convinced a few people to check it out, more than a few people. We've nice. got three, 350 people watching live right now. Um, cool. Hello, what, people. Hey, the <laughs> okay. I, all right, yes, get your question <laughs> for Tommy. And there is a trailer. Did the trailer drop for yeah, this? Yeah, the trailer's out. Yeah. The trailer's out. Okay. You got to see this because you will not believe it. What made you even think in your mind's eye, like, I'm going to make a movie and it's a documentary about Barney the dinosaur? Why did you decide to do it? Yeah, it, dude, it was just one of those things where I was you know, on Instagram and I saw this old, like, 1993 newscast. It was um, it was a the University of Nebraska. It was a Barney bashing event, and all these college kids were just beating up Barney, like ripping him up, hitting him with a hammer. And at the end, the newscaster is like, "Well, that's the future of the country, right there." And it's like, <laughs> we're living in that future now. Like we're living in so much hate. Why don't we tell make a documentary about like why do we love the things we love? Why do we hate the things we hate? And tell it through the story of Barney the dinosaur. So that's really where it came to. It wasn't like I was like, ah, Barney needs a documentary, you know, because so much of the stuff like no one knew. It was just kind of like we had this idea and we just started investigating and it's kind of where it came to be. Yeah, it's it's amazing. The level of detail, like I, like I, I got to ask, like, where do you even start with it? Because when you watch the first five minutes of the movie, I'm riveted. Okay. There's, there's, there's a crime element to it. There's sort of a, a rise and a fall that sort of rags to riches story. That is also a, a great story to tell of this, you know, young mother from Texas who decided I'm going to just make a character for my son to yeah. entertain my son. There there's also like the behind the scenes um, these incredibly passionate people, the, the actor who's the dancer who played Barney, the dinosaur, he, his passion is incredible. So where do you even start on doing research to be able to put together, like at least sort of a loose outline of the story? Yeah. I mean, it's really kind of just like Facebook, you know, like, mm -hmm. uh, we hit up Bob West, the voice of Barney. We're talking to David Jordan, the body of Barney. You try to hit those sort of people uh and then you start finding other things and you know when we first started talking to bob west i was like hey you know he knew of my work from the bill murray stories you know and uh we had this like great conversation i told him I was, this i was like this is a research mission you know like i was like i just want to i don't know anything about barney you know when i was young i was too old for barney but you know me and my friends had a barney costume that my aunt made us and we would beat it up on camera you know that was like our way of being like we thought we were like mad TV. There's a couple seconds of it in this movie here, but you know, and then he told me that, yeah, there was some hate from Barney. He actually got a death threat from a nine-year-old uh, via email, you know? And so it was just all these sort of things that we'd find out. And David Joyner is like an interesting character where some people are upset with him because he's also a tantric sex guru, you know? And with that, that's those two words that and Barney, you know, are like, some might think is weird, but like the way David talks about it, I think is really, you know, you, you get it, you know? So there's a lot of strange characters. One of the writers from Barney used to write for Chuck E. Cheese. Another writer has like 13 parrots in his room. When we talk to him, there's this little, and one of them used to be a mime. It's, it's a, it's a really great, unique cast of characters for Barney. Well, we've got uh, over 300 people watching right now. A lot of questions from the chat. Do you okay. mind taking some chat questions? Sure. I, I cannot see them. Is that all right? I'll read them to you. I'll okay, read good. them. So here we go. Uh, Lord Thoughts says, it's a blockbuster, commenting on your background. It's and actually a watchdog video. It was a mom and pop <laughs> shop in uh, Audubon, New Jersey. So. Oh, that's great. <laughs> when they went under, that's, yeah. 
Patrick Lemire says, we don't need to go to Blockbuster. We have a Blockbuster at home. And uh, Matthew Hammond for four ninety nine says, how many hours of Barney did you have to watch to create this movie? You know what's great? I didn't edit this movie. So not <laughs> as much as you think. You know, I, I watched this. So so Barney was first like with tapes. So like these these tapes right here were the first eight tapes of Barney. Uh, I watched them and then I watched a couple episodes. I watched the movie. Well, other than that, I didn't watch too much because, you know, it is it is a story about Barney, but also it isn't. It's it, we 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 call it like a love hugs and American rage, you know, and it's all about like, you know, in, in so many of my documentaries, we kind of do these sort of Trojan horse sort of things where you're learning about Barney. But we're also talking about like, where does hate come from and why do we hate the things we hate? Right. Um, let's see. Uh, VDR says. Have you needed ther needed to attend therapy after making this doc? <laughs> but yeah, but that was just me from going from an independent artist to doing something with a network. That has nothing to do with <laughs> Barney. <laughs> I'll, I'll show, the, oh no, go ahead. I, I could I I whenever I'm have anyone down in the basement. This was since we're talking about the movies. I want to show this really weird movie that I have. Uh, I'm I'm, I'm guaranteeing you've never seen it, or if you did, it's uh. It's all the same. Oh, let's okay. Let's see. All right. So Tommy's going to his shelf. This is it's amazing, and it's the green screen paint, which is great. <laughs> yeah. What is no, this movie? A no, a gnome named Norm. Oh, I've heard of that. I've never seen it. But I've, I've it. never heard of that one. Is that Dave Coulier? No, no, it's uh, <laughs> Anthony Michael Hall and some like, oh, weird creature. What is this movie? I don't know, dude. Like, I used to work at a video store, and I always see this cover. I was like, and I've still never watched it. Uh, that's <laughs> not true. I've seen parts. It's really weird, but I never, I couldn't tell you one thing about it, uh, but I can't wait to like rewatch it one day. It's just like, I always oh. remember it being such a weird, it's like almost like Mac and me, you know, like the, the character. God, it, lo it looks like something that would be featured on best of the worst, you know, red letter media. Right. They do those, they yeah. do those best of the worst. I think it's kind of a hidden gem. I don't know. I'm not sure many people know about that one. <laughs> I'll just put it down there. Uh, let's see. VDR says, VDR says, I've seen a gnome named Norm. The G isn't silent. <laughs> oh, did I say uh, it wrong? We've got, there's a lot of questions <laughs> for you. A lot of questions for you. So let me go okay. through these. Let's hit it. Um, Let's Zach Trammell says, I love the Bill Murray stories. Can't wait to check this out. Uh, which and Bill Murray's right here, right here. Look. Oh, there he is. There yeah. he is. That's the mask you use in the film. <laughs> yeah. Uh, CD Stein 69 says, what subject would you delve into for a documentary if you had free range and why? Well, I am doing a new documentary right now called the house from all about people who live in famous houses from movies and TV shows. And we're actually releasing it ourselves. We have a Kickstarter right now, uh, the house from.com and we're in the Kickstarter. We're giving, we're one of the rewards is a limited time only Kickstarter uh, DVD. So it would be something that would fit in this collection. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, we've been to the house from Full House, Home Alone, Golden Girls, Friday, Silence of the Lambs, Uncle Buck, Trains, Planes, and Automobiles, Twilight. We've been to all these houses, talk to the owners. We actually had Ethan Umbrake go back to the Can't Hardly Wait house and do some lines from Can't Hardly Wait. Uh, so it's a great project, and we're just we're just going to release it ourselves. So that's what our Kickstarter is for it. Thehousefrom.com. Okay, wait, I gotta go to it right here i want to share it so people can see oh nice there you go the campaign the campaign is live now 21 ways 21 days to go you are 10 percent of the way toward your goal we're at 11 chris 11. <laughs> wait. no it says 21 days to go oh no 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 11 percent. i was just uh <laughs> oh, 11 percent. oh okay 11 percent. it's better yeah it's um, a, little, a little slow this week because of barney but you know after uh barney week uh we're gonna put more attention towards it but uh i'm really well, excited about this one i'm actually going this week i'm flying to albuquerque to do some of the uh breaking bad and going to uh tulsa for the outsider's house well i hope you come to pasadena because pasadena is home to one of the houses from back to the future so many so a bunch. And then also the Adam West 1966 Batman TV series, Wayne Manor is in Pasadena. Yeah. And I've, so, I've, so much is in Pasadena. On one street in Pasadena, there's uh, Biff's house from Back to the Future. The house Biff kicked the ball on. That's Luke Wilson's house from old school. Right next to that is Lorraine's house from Back to the Future, which is also the same house 
from Teen Wolf that Michael J. Fox had. Uh, and then over here is George McFly's house, and then Ghost Dad, and across the street is 30 something, all on one block oh. in South Pasadena. Wow. Uh, well, I love living here. It's it's yeah, like no, it's West is great, man. Uh, lo- uh, Andrew Eterno says famous house and Brady Bunch house. Yeah, I think HGTV no, did yeah, that. Yeah, we didn't do that one just because it's you know it's owned by the network and they kind of did this weird construction thing already. Oh, that's bizarre. Paul Colton for five says I worked part time at a PBS station in college, master control operator. One Sunday during Pledge Week, there was a Barney marathon. Eight hours of Barney, man. <laughs> so. Yeah, but um, you know what? I bet Barney raised a lot of money for PBS that day because <laughs> he was crazy with the kids. Like, the kids loved him. Crux Riaju Chu says, did you interview the VA for Barney? If so, what was the most interesting question you personally had that got answered? The VA. You interviewed a lot of people. voice actor. Voice actor. Yeah, the, the voice actor. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Bob West. Yeah, he... Uh, he was the original voice of Barney uh, up until like early 2000s. And then we also interviewed Dean Went, who was the other voice of Barney. Yeah. Uh, Patrick Lemire asks, uh, not to be specific, but does getting picked up by Peacock replace what you would get from a theatrical run pre-streaming? Um, yeah, we didn't do a theatrical run for this. You know, I still haven't seen it with an audience, which is a little disappointing. But, you know, stream- it, it was great to have like a network sort of be behind this one because – you know, I did I Am Santa Claus, the Bill Murray stories and Waldo and Weed. And, you know, Bill Murray stories and Santa were both on Netflix for a couple of years, but there's never that sort of network push. So it's really exciting to kind of I was I was on Access Hollywood, guys. Mario <laughs> Lopez said my name. <laughs> wow. what, what was it like working with the network? What, did you were you restricted at all or was it fairly open? It was different. And I'll say it this way that I think. In my life, I'm going to go from a you know a network thing to a completely independent thing. It's the only way I feel like I would like keep myself sane because there's a lot of things about making an independent movie that drive me crazy, like doing everything yourself and or like with two other people, which is so fantastic. Not to do that with, I mean, we had like so many like I didn't have to book my own flights. That was fantastic, you know. <laughs> Uh, and like to not have to worry about so many things you could, so you could just focus on telling the story. But on the flip side, it's like, you know, there's a lot of people's opinions and you just, you're, you're trying to do your best to tell, uh, like a, you know, straightforward story. So it's just back and forth. So I enjoy, there's so many things I enjoyed working with the network, but then there's also things that I really, really love doing independent that I don't, I don't get from doing it at a network. Uh, more questions and comments here. Uh, Ryan Landis says, Barney, Jar Jar, body, buddy cop movie. That's my pitch. Yeah. Well, well, Chris, you and me talked about this. Uh, right. In episode two of our uh, Barney thing, we talk about episode one of Star Wars and how the fans went crazy. But I, we focus on Jake Lloyd. But Chris, you were saying that we should have done the Jar Jar Bing. Jar Jar, I think, was the <laughs> more direct connect. But VDR says, does Baby Bop get any screen time in this doc? Uh, no, unfortunately. You know, oh. we we spoke to the actress who played uh, Baby Bop, uh, but she was actually like on tour when we were filming. So we just kept missing her. Uh, and BJ, uh, when we were in Texas, had COVID. So it was like we it was just one of the situations we both talked to them, but it just didn't work out with the schedule. And we 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 tried to get Tinky Winky in the this thing as well. But, uh, you know, he was in Europe and it just didn't work out. But we have Steve from Blue's Clues and Bill Nye, the science guy, and Al Roker. No, there's a lot of good cameos that are unexpected. So uh, Lord Thaw says, love this interview, guys. CD969 oh, cool. says, my, my wife was a family video store owner, uh, store manager for years. When we started dating, his green walls with the video racks brought back ton of memories right i mean and like then, blockbuster had their colors but like you know the the independent stores the mom and pop shops had these like fun bright colors you know yeah um uh kid 50 asks, do you hate him do you hate barney uh no i've learned to appreciate barney uh at the time when he came out i didn't understand him and that's usually where all hate comes from in the first place but uh i've definitely now appreciate barney because i i mean that's the funny thing is like it wasn't made by some like New York or LA, you know, executive network sort of person. It was a school teaching mom from Allen, Texas, which is right near Dallas. And she was like, you know, my kid, you know, I would, it would be great for my kid to watch something that could take his, you know, just a, his attention for a minute. And so she'd made Barney and it became huge. 
Yeah, it's uh, no. it's oh. oh, someone's Solomon Thornton says, "Are you going to do a Teletubbies or Kalu Doc?" <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> That's easy. Um, Let me ask you this: um, In terms of answering that question of why do people hate Barney, was it? Did you go in with kind of an open mind, saying let's find the answer, or was there kind of an idea that you thought was the answer, and that you kind of pursued that that route for a while? Well, it's like why someone hates something. It says a lot more about themselves than anything, you know. Like when we interview the the guy who uh, created the I Hate Barney Secret Society. You know, and he talks about how he came home from work and his daughter, you know, he was excited for his daughter to give him a big hug. And instead, she's watching Barney. So, like, he starts getting this sort of jealousy thing. And in, in this I Hate Barney Secret Society, he talks about the kids being a Barney addict and the dysfunctional family. And, like, you know, you see throughout the film, not to give anything away, but, like, you know, he was an alcoholic. He was getting divorced. So it's like it, it hits all these sort of triggers. Like Bob West, the voice of Barney, said Barney is kind of like a mirror to all the things we don't like about ourselves. So it really just kind of hits these certain targets, especially love. I mean, love in the 90s, like that's such mm -hmm. an uncomfortable word and thing. It's like, I, you know, I'm not I don't know how, what love is. So I don't like this thing that's telling me about love, you know? Well, I think there's a difference between not liking something, because frankly, I, I didn't like, I didn't like Barney. I mean, like my kids. Of course, it wasn't made for you. That's why. It's you not know? made for me. It's fine. But I didn't act on it in anything. You know right. what I mean? Like, there's nothing I didn't like. Well, you're a healthy uh, individual. Well, maybe. I don't know. That's questionable. But um, <laughs> yeah, Davina Duckworth says hate is a strong word. Yeah. Mm. Like, yeah, I sure. Yeah. I, but I, I can just say, like, the one thing was, is just like, because didn't they, is this a true thing? Did they play Barney for, to torture? Yes. Um, okay. So tell us about that. Yeah, so it, we didn't. We kind of have a little audio snippet, but it was like it was some CNN report where they they use um, uh, the "I Love You" song at Gitmo to torture people, uh, and that's. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, like any song over and over and over can be torturous, you know. But even just recently during the pandemic, there was a bunch of homeless people in some area of Los Angeles, and the people of the uh, the building just kept playing "I Love You," "You Love Me." Uh, and driving some of the homeless people crazy. They're like the song, the song, you know. So, and wasn't it wasn't it a uh, Waco? They played the my these boots are made for walking over and over and over. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, I like I like that. I like Barney being used, you know, to to potentially clean up L.A. <laughs> kind of heartless, but um, I I don't know if the current way we're dealing with the homeless issue, or as they call it now, unhoused. I don't think it's working. So what we're doing no. is it working um, toward the benefit of both citizens and the people who are in that in that state, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, David Carlin says, I don't need to hear what some 40 year old man thinks of Barty the Dinosaur. It wasn't made for you. I kind of know what he's referencing. Uh, Andrew Eterno says Barney calmed our hearts as toddlers. So Andrew might be the right age. See. Yeah, so, I mean, like, that's what Barney was. Barney was, like, some of these people's first friends. Like, in our film, we asked, okay, well, you weren't Barney. You weren't a Barney fan. Maybe you weren't connected to Barney, but who was your Barney? You know, like, mine was Cookie Monster. You know, like, the way I think about Cookie Monster, like, it warms my heart. It makes me feel, like, safe, and it just fills me with joy. So it's, like, you got to respect what that character is for people. Yeah, Mr. Rogers was was that for a lot of people. Oh, yeah, it. totally. Now, Mr. Right. Rogers is a unique guy where, like, I never liked Mr. Rogers as a kid. But then I watched Morgan Neville's documentary. I was like, oh, my God, this is great. Tom Hanks movie. You're like, this is great. Gavin Edwards wrote a book about Mr. Rogers. I was like, this guy is fantastic, <laughs> you know? Well, we talked about that your movie could be the basis for a narrative feature. Has that been discussed? I don't know. I mean, not with me. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I know, was it the um, oh the guy from Get Out? Um Jordan Peele? No, the actor. Oh. Uh, oh why am I blanking on his name? Uh, well, that dude from the the act, the lead actor in Get Out. Mm -hmm. uh, he is trying to develop something with Mattel about like a scripted yeah. Barney movie. Uh, Daniel Kaluuya, thank you. Yeah, yeah Daniel Kaluuya. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Blair. Uh, he uh, he was trying to do a scripted movie about Barney, and the idea there was, okay, I love you, but what if you don't love me? You know, and like I thought that was super interesting, but. You know, they've been trying to work on that since 2019, but that's all I know. Uh, Ryan Landis says, this documentary sounds great. I've got to check it out. One thing I think I failed to mention, the documentary is very funny. 
Oh, cool. It's Thank funny. you. It's really funny. So you're like, you know, look, it has its dark moments, but there's very funny stuff. And we can wrap up here with one last question here. Glenuccio asks, what's the key to making a doc that immediately sucks the audience in? Because that's the one thing I, when I was reviewing it earlier, we talked about it. Like this, like the first five minutes and I'm like, well, now I know what I'm doing for the next two hours. You know, right. like, well, it was how do you do that? Like, I think it's different for each documentary, right? But for this one in particular, you know, I th it, it, here's a good example. Like when I first talked to you, I was like, you know, I've been on the show before. I've known you for a while. I was like, Chris, yeah. I'd love to come on and promote Barney. You're like, I don't think that's for my audience. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, you got to watch it. Right. And that's what we wanted to do with this movie. It's like in the first five minutes, you know, you're, it's not going to be your, what you might think would be a Barney documentary, you know, right. it, it really hits you like, and it just puts you on the off kilt, you know? And that was like our, our thing. It's like, boom, 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 boom. This is something different. This is something special. Here's a story, you know? And then, uh, I think that's just, your answer is a lot of boom, boom, boom. It, it, <laughs> I, I'm just, Cause you've seen a lot of docs do that. We're like the first few minutes of a documentary is so important because the, yeah. you know, the first few minutes of any, thing that you're going to watch to suck you in is important especially if it's on streaming if you're in the theater you're stuck right you can right. actually have a slow burn and slowly right. get into a character a topic whatever but when it comes to streaming you better front load everything you're about to get out of this out of whatever it is you're about to watch like give me a taste of what it is and i think that was that's the secret because the documentaries that suck me in the first five minutes are riveting and that's true for your documentary because i told you and like even though i've known you and right. uh you'll talk about the you're produced the guar documentary and i think we're going to get guar on the show yeah, i think next video. week right yeah i think is it is it next friday yeah i think next I think friday so. wow. Guar members <laughs> of guar and you and the director will be on the show i think it's just so. i think it's just scott yeah i mean uh just i, I well, I, I I could. I I just didn't. I thought you would be over me already. All right. No, no, no. I'm not over you. But like when you when you said like the Barney, you're right. Like my reaction was, why would I want to watch that? And then <laughs> literally within five minutes, within five, I'm just like, okay, I have to watch. Now I have to drop everything and just watch this. I mean, that so. was the important part. Like, I and mean, here's the thing too. It's like, so this is my first time working with a network, and I have great production partners with Scout Productions. Scout, mm -hmm. uh, they created uh, Queer Eye, Legendary, The Hype, you know, and you know, Rob, our executive producer, uh, he kept having to tell me because it's like my first thing that's not an independent thing. He was, this isn't Sundance. This is television. <laughs> you know and and i can't because like I, there's a part of me that wants to do that slow burn and like that sort of artsy sort of stuff these are the movies like I, I have a 24 section of my thing like i love those kind of movies you know but at the end of the day it's television you know and and you kind of have to grab that person right away and that's i like to think that's what we did it was that sort of like you you have no idea what this movie is going to be you know you you heard barney but this is this you know it's uh, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I everyone, if you've got Peacock or just sign up for Peacock just to see this, it's well worth it. A few more comments before you leave. Sure. And we have another That's special fine. guest about to join us. Ryan Landis says, Tommy, it looks like you're getting a lot of press on this. That's awesome. Congrats. Patrick Lemire says, whenever something wholesome has a dark side, it's a big hook. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll just want to understand that, like. Our documentary, it's the dark side of us. You know, Barney right. was fine. It's the dark side of society because <laughs> Barney well, was good. It was just yeah. the way we reacted to it. Yeah. And then Andrew Aterno says, I'm watching this doc for sure. It's a fantastic premise. So, Thank you. yeah, that's great. Uh, awesome. And then, Tommy, your tell us the website again for your Kickstarter because I just, I just, you know, bookmarked it. Oh, um, nice. It's thehousefrom.com. Uh, and yeah, and we, we, so far we've hit 17 different houses. We're just going to do a little bit more, but the main thing is just releasing ourselves. Like Barney's the big one, you know, but this, this, uh, house thing, you know, there's not like if you, whenever you pitch to a network, they want like stakes, you know, the drama, you're like, is someone going to lose their house? Is someone die in one of these houses? And that's not the story. It's just like, what's it like to live in a famous house? It's just jumping into this world checking it out for like, you know, 90 minutes, 80 minutes and just saying, wow, that was interesting. I never thought of that. So that's why we're releasing ourselves because I don't believe that every documentary needs those sort of, uh, stakes drama. Right. Uh, Tommy, thank you so much. Tommy Avalone, 
being on the Film Threat Livecast. You've been on it like three times now. Yeah. Uh, probably uh, I'll see you back again for the house from. Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll definitely talk about it. Congrats on the Kickstarter. I want to thank you, dude. This, I mean, like, I never thought I'd be like raving about, yeah, the gnome <laughs> from North. What the hell? The gnome name. Oh, my God. That's that's horrific. You know, uh, I wore the right. same shirt three days in a row doing press. I just felt like it's my Barney shirt, and I just oh. haven't washed it yet. So, oh my god, yeah, you've got the <laughs> Barney purple flannel. Yeah, that's just perfect. trying to do like the Mick Foley uh, approach, you know? <laughs> it's totally working. Tommy, thanks again for being here. Really appreciate it. Uh, we'll have you back again. Congrats on the on the movie, and congrats on the new Kickstarter coming up. Thanks, man. I appreciate. It. I love film threads. So, thank you so much. Awesome. Take care. Later. See ya. What a great guy. Love that guy. <laughs>